After hiring out for a few Bricks projects and talking to multiple Bricks users, I've learned that the archive template is a bit of a mystery. Most people will create an archive template for their blog posts, but they will forget to create one for the categories. So when users visit a category page, it's just unstyled and doesn't look right. Some will create two different templates. They'll create one for the archive and then they'll create one for the categories. But now if you want to style them the same, you have to copy and paste styles over between the two. Others will style the blog page directly without doing an archive template, but then you're back to square one where you have no category page styling. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create two templates into one. We're gonna do the archive template and the category template in one. So we're gonna use custom conditions to output dynamic data depending on which page it is. So let's hop into this. This is gonna be a fun one. This is Nick from the future. I just wanted to hop in real quick after finishing the video. This is gonna be a long tutorial. Make sure you look at the timeline down below to see which part of the video you're in and skip to whatever you want to see. I am going to do execution first. So we will put everything up on the page and then I will do styling at the very end, which will be unfiltered. This will be just me trying to figure out how I'm gonna style all of this. So you'll see how I'm thinking about things and where I'm gonna play some CSS. But with that, let's, let's hop back into the video. Here's the game plan. I have this designed out in Figma first, so I know which direction I'm moving in. But for my archive page, I just want a simple title, a description, and my cards. On the same template, I want to have a category page that has the category name, the category description, and a button to take them back to all blogs if they want to see everything, if they land on this page. So two different use cases, but one template. Let's build that out right now. When we're on the WordPress dashboard, let's head over to Bricks templates and add a new template. We'll call this blog archive. And we have to select the type that it is over on the right hand side and we'll choose archive. We'll publish and let's edit in bricks. First thing I want to do is I want to set the conditions for this template to only show for the archive of the blog posts and the archive for the categories. So let's do that. I'm gonna add in a section with a heading just so that I can see if it's working or not. And we'll call this blog archive template. And let's set the conditions. So we'll go to settings, template settings, conditions, add a condition, and I will choose archive. And it's gonna say what kind of, what type of archive is it? It's gonna be for a post type of posts, my blog posts. But I also want this to be for my categories. So right here under archive type, we'll choose categories and we will select all terms categories. Now, if you have a custom post type with a custom taxonomy, like for instance, I have a YouTube categories that will have that taxonomy under here too, but I only want to select my category terms for my blog post. So just my default category. So all terms categories and we'll click save. This is gonna show up with a problem. And I wanna show you that right now. Let's go to my blog page. We'll see that the template is not working. Now with, with the blog archive specifically, we have to add one more condition. We need to set this to be individual and choose the blog page itself. Now when I save, now the template shows. We only have to do this with a blog archive. We don't have to do this with any other post type. I'm not sure why, it's just something that we have to do. So bear that in mind when you're making this template. If you don't see it on your actual blog page, then it's because you have not set it to the individual page itself alongside with the, the archive type. So keep that in mind. Now that I have the condition set up, let's look over at my Figma file and let's go ahead and get these conditional um, pieces of content set up. I want to show different headers per, per type. So one for my archive and one for my category. Let's do that first. So I have, let's make this an H1 and I want this to be blog for my, my blog. So we'll call this blog heading, which I've already done. And let's duplicate this. And I want one for my category page. And this one, we're gonna add a dynamic data of archive title. And that's going to pull in the name of the category. But if I look at my Figma file, I want it to be category with the name of the category. So I'm gonna put category before it. We'll do category colon the actual category, okay? So if I view this on the front end, if I go to blog, I can see I have two headings. 
And if I open up, let's go to my posts, let's go to my categories, let's open up a category page. If I open up a category page, it's gonna show both as well. But let's, let's set some conditions so that it doesn't show both, it only shows what's relevant to that page. So on here, I'm gonna go, let's go to my blog heading. I'm gonna go conditions, I'm gonna do add new, and we're gonna do dynamic data. Now what's really cool about this is that the dynamic data allows us to check against custom PHP. So if I check, if I type in here PHP, and I do output PHP function or echo, I want to check against what's called um, colon is underscore category parentheses. So I'm gonna to check to see, this is a default WordPress function that checks if a page is a category. And if it is, it returns true. If it's not a category page, it returns false. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, if the, the, blog, the blog title, if it is not, is not, a category, do uh, show it. If it's not a category page, show this heading. So we're gonna put true if it is not true. And I'm gonna copy this is category and we're gonna go to blog heading. And let's do dynamic data. Let's check against that function. If it is true, if it is a category page, show my category heading. And let's change the name over here to category heading and we'll save this. So watch, check this out. My blog page has one title and my category page has a different title. Same template, but different use cases, different elements will display. And what's cool is this is not just going to use CSS and do display none, it's only going to render in the HTML the individual pieces. It's only gonna, um, only gonna render this title on the blog archive and it's only gonna render this title on the category archive. So it keeps everything really clean. Now let's add in my descriptions. So I had some text in here and I think it's just lorem ipsum for my blog archive for now. So I'm gonna copy my lorem ipsum. Here is going to be my, this is gonna be my blog description. And I'm gonna add one more. This one, I wanna pull in some dynamic data, which will be my term description. So term description, there we go, okay? And if I look on the front end, this should be pulling in a description from the term itself. So if I go, I think if I go back, it's pulling from here within the category description. So let's go back again. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, it's pulling in that information dynamically. And I want this to show, let's go back to my conditions here. So you can click on the icon over here. It'll take you straight to the condition of an element. Let's grab this and we will copy it here. So dynamic data, we'll say is category, when this equals true, show my, let's call this category description. Let's go to my blog description, add a condition, dynamic data, paste that in there. When this does not equal true, show my blog description. So now I have blog description there, and category description here. So we are we are on our way to getting this set up in one template. Now I want to make note, if you are using, if you're gonna use this for a custom post type or a, a custom taxonomy, for instance, you would not use is category. Is category, when you're trying to do a condition, is category is only for the default categories on WordPress. So if you're using those default categories, use this function. But if you have a custom taxonomy, you're gonna to wanna to use is underscore tax and in parentheses, you're gonna to wanna to put the tax name here. Whatever the name of your taxonomy is, you're gonna to wanna to put it within this function. And that's gonna be for any custom taxonomies that you've created. So you can use the same idea for any post type or any taxonomy that you want. But for our use case, we are just going to use is underscore category, the default WordPress categories. Let's do one last thing, what else do we have? If I look at my category page, I also need a button. So let's add a new button here. I'm not gonna style this yet. I'm gonna hold off on styling it. So let's add a button. Let's do, no, not a button, because I want I want the, uh, let, me, let me check here. I don't know if I can change where this button goes. So if I just choose one, it just automatically, I can choose left or right, I can. Okay, so let's, let's just do a button. 
let's add a button here and let's choose ion icons and we'll do that there and we'll do position left. So I want the icon on the left and let's say this is all posts and let's make this link go to internal, the blog page. And I'm gonna style this later. I'll give this a class and style it a little bit later, but for now, let's take a look. Okay, I have this button that's there, but I want it to only show for my category page. So I'm gonna go back to my conditions here and I'm gonna copy from another one. Let's go add, we'll go dynamic data. I'll just paste it in here. Echo is category. When this equals true, show my button. So only show on my category page. So here's my, let's see here. That's, here's my blog. Does not show my blog archive, but now it shows on my category. That's what I want. Okay, perfect. We're matching what the goal is here. Now we need to add the cards to the page, but I want to make sure that everything is semantic on my page first. So I'm gonna check my, my um, descriptions here and they were divs. So let's change those to P's to paragraphs. And I want to wrap these in a div. So if I look here, I have most of these bulked together and there's a line underneath it. So I could actually add a border on the bottom to the wrapper of the content on top. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, in my container, I'm gonna add a block. Let's move it up. And I'm gonna move all of my content up in the top here into its own div. And we'll call this um, hero content. Okay. And what else can we do? We need to add in another another block in our container. This is going to be our card grid. And I want to make sure that I, I change the HTML tag for this to a unordered list, so a UL for our cards. And I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna just add three blocks in here just for now. And we need to set this, right now it's adding some padding if you see here because it's an unordered list. So I'm gonna set list dash dash none to take that away with automatic CSS. And I wanna create a grid. So I'm gonna use ACSS for this as well. We'll do grid auto three, okay? And I want to have some gaps. So we'll do gap of L. All right, I've got some gapping on that. And this is gonna be our card. So I'm gonna call this my card. And I'm gonna delete these other two in here. Don't need them now, cause I'm gonna create a query loop. So let's use this one as a query loop. I don't have to choose the query for this because the archive itself is handling that for me. So I can leave this blank. I don't have to touch it. We're just gonna turn on query loop and leave it. It's gonna pull in our blog posts. So we'll leave that alone. And let's go ahead and start adding some things in here. Let's do, what do we have? On our card, we have an image and content. So let's add two blocks inside, one for the image, one for the content itself. So I'm gonna add two blocks. And this will be my image wrapper, the top one. And the bottom one is gonna be my content. Inside my image wrapper, let's go ahead and add an image. And let's set this to featured image. It's gonna be all wonky, but we'll style this later. And I don't want a large, it's much too large. Let's do a 600, that's smaller and better. And let's start with our content. So what do we have here? I have I have the categories, a title, and some text. So let's add a text box, a heading, and a text. Then my content, let's do basic text, heading, and text. All right, so Bricks allows me to do some dynamic data. So if I type in categories, there is dynamic data post terms categories that will pull in some linkable content here. I'm gonna do something custom in a minute, but I'll leave this here for now and we'll move on. So let's move on. I'm gonna add in my post title and let's talk about this for a second. We want my post title to be clickable. We're gonna eventually make the whole card clickable, but the link needs to be on the post title. So what we'd usually do in this instance is go to link to dynamic data and then go post URL. Now, if I save this and we go on the front end, we can see my cards here. This is clickable, this does take me to the WordPress web, the, the, the blog post. But if I inspect this, I do not have any ARIA labels. So the accessibility isn't all there. We need to do one more step for this. And that would be on my ARIA label saying, read more about the 
post title. So it'll say something like read more about how to make money in a crowded industry. So if I save that, now we have the ARIA label, read more about the mistakes I've made as an agency owner for this one. Here's the thing, we don't have to do all those steps. We can actually condense this down into one single step. So I'm gonna remove all this and do a better method. And in my post title, I'm gonna do colon link. This is a uh, this is a filter that Bricks allows us to use in dynamic data. And when I save this, we'll go to the front end. It will automatically add the link to this. So now it links to the post, but it will also add an ARIA label for me automatically. I don't have to do all those steps. It's just put in colon link and it does all the work for me. Super, super cool. Okay, let's move on to the date, post date. So down here, let's do... Uh, post date. And now there's also, I found this out in the documents. If I look at this, let's refresh. Now it says what date it was posted. But if I go to the, let's go to Academy, Bricks Builder, type in dynamic data, because I do not remember the name of, um, okay. dynamic data. We'll scroll down. I'm looking for this one, post date human time difference. So if I copy this and use this instead, it's going to put five days, three months, three months. So like this is how long ago was this posted? It just, it's more human. I like the touch of it. So let's use it. Let's say ago and let's put posted. So it says posted, posted five days ago, posted three months ago, posted three months ago. I like that a lot more. So let's go with that method here. Okay, and let's make sure we're semantic here. I wanna make this a paragraph. And this one, I don't think I wanna make it a paragraph because if I'm looking at, let's check this out real quick. Actually, first, let's change this to what I want it to be. So I don't want to use the default post terms category because it does a like comma separated list. I don't want that. And if I look at my Figma file, I have something custom that does like circles in between it. So I, I tried to do a query loop for this to create these categories and I was not able to do it. So I have a snippet that we're gonna use and I will put this in the description down below if you want to use it for yours as well. But we're gonna do that snippet. And what I'm gonna do here is in my container, I'm gonna add a code box. Let's add this code box above my card grid and we're gonna paste in my code here. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna render without wrapper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy my function. So my cat grabber, I'm gonna copy this and in my post terms category over here, let's remove it. And in dynamic data, we'll type in PHP. And here we're gonna echo colon my function that I created. And what this is gonna do, let's save on the front end. It's going to do a custom output for me. So here is my, let's see here, where are we at? Right here. We have a div and it's going to output a UL. Can I, can I increase this? I can. It's gonna output an unordered list with list items here. That's what I want to do. I want it to do an unordered list for me, um, not the comma separate list. So this was something custom. Perfect, it's doing what I want. And I do not wanna set this item to a paragraph because we don't want a UL inside a paragraph. We just want a div. So I'm going to keep this to just a div. We don't need a paragraph here. This can stay in H3, that's fine. I am skipping in H2, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, I'm not not too worried about it because then there's a bunch of H2s in this and you don't, you don't want that. So, okay, let's see, what else do we need to do? I think everything is set up and ready to start styling, but one thing we need to take into consideration, I have built this so far to look exactly like it does here, but to build a card that's accessible, that is built the right way with best practices, the heading title needs to be the very first item in the card. So what I need to do first is I need to flip my content in my image wrapper so that they're flipped over. We're gonna flip this in CSS, but in the DOM, it needs to be first. And then I also, inside my content here, I need to put my heading as the very first item. So when I save it, it's gonna look all wonky. The heading title's up here. Everything is, is mismatched. But with CSS, we're gonna flip those so everything looks appropriate. But we want our DOM to have our title at the very first 
piece in the card. So now we've set this up appropriately. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hop into styling now. So you guys have seen on how to set everything up. Now it's gonna be styling, giving things classes. You're gonna see my entire workflow, my thinking of how I'm going to give these classes. Are they gonna be global classes? Are they gonna be uh, very specific to the elements? How am I gonna name them? Where am I going to style them? Everything's gonna be styled in WP Codebox with SAS. I, I'm purposely not styling it in Bricks Builder because that's my workflow. Everything is done in SAS just because it 10 X's my workflow to be simple and clean. So we're gonna do SAS today. If you would like to see me style in the future in Bricks, leave a comment below and I can switch that over for my tutorials. But today we're gonna to be working in SAS. So you'll see my whole, my whole um, thinking behind where I'm placing all of my CSS. So let's do that right now. All right, everything is gonna need classes. Before I do that though, I was taking a look here. I wanna make sure that all my stuff is named appropriately. Um, let's do, uh, let's make sure that this is my title. This is gonna be my categories. And this is my, my post date. And I think we're good. The rest of it is looking good here. Okay, let's give everything some classes. So here's my hero content. I know I'm gonna to wanna to style this. I'm gonna to wanna to gap all of my content here and add a border at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a class of, let's do blog hero um, content because this would be specific to the blog. So yeah, let's just do that. Let's do that for now, okay? And here's my card grid. I'm not gonna give my grid a class because I'm using some utility classes. So for my, my workflow, I will say, if I'm using utility classes, I cannot use a custom class. There are some use cases like list none. I will use that with a custom class. There's, there's some little things, but otherwise, if I'm using utility classes, no custom class, right? It's one or the other. So I'm gonna skip my card grid here and I'm gonna go to my cards. And here's my question I have for myself. Do I wanna give this like a class that is only for the blog or am I gonna use these cards elsewhere in my website? And I know I'm gonna use these cards elsewhere in my website. If you use Figma, usually if you have the whole website built out, you can just kind of reference that like, oh, do I have these cards elsewhere on other pages? If you do, use a global class naming convention, don't use single. So we're not gonna call this a blog card. I'm just gonna call this a post card because I'm gonna use this post card for all kinds of posts, my YouTube videos, everything, right? I'm gonna use the same kind of style. So we'll just call it postcard. And let's see, let's go down the list here. What do we have? I have my content. So I'm gonna call this postcard double underscore content. I have inside my content, I have a title. So let's do postcard double underscore title categories, postcard double underscore categories. I have my post date. Oh, did that not, did that not add? That did not add, post, there we go. Okay, post date, post card date. And here's my image wrapper, post, post card double underscore image wrapper. And then here's my image, post card double underscore image. I'll just do IMG. Okay, and all my cards, make sure all these have, have classes, they do, and everything's looking good. Perfect, my hero content has something. All right, we are set to get going. Now let's style all of this. Let's figure out where we're gonna put everything uh, in, in SAS. I'm gonna close all these down. Let's go to the front end. I'll save this. Let's refresh my blog page and let's go to dashboard. I'll open up WP Codebox. And what I wanna do first is let's style the very top piece. Let's style my dog, my dog, my blog hero content. We are going to put this into, I think it's own, its own partial. So let's do that. Let's put it in its own partial. In my page CSS, we'll put it down there. I'm gonna create a new partial and I'm gonna call this blog underscore archive. So here's my new partial to hold all that blog archive stuff that I want. So I'm gonna put this under page CSS. And what I need to do before I can start putting it in here is I need to reference it on my global sheet. So We'll do at use, reference my partial, and now it's in my global sheet so I can start putting in some CSS. 
So let's do that now. We have my blog hero content. We'll do uh, blog hero content. And we want to set this to have a gap. That was the first thing I noted. I'm gonna use a variable for this from ACSS. And let's do large. And let's save it. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's go to my category page. Let's move this over there. Okay, that's spaced out too much. Let's do small. That's way, way too much. Where am I at here? Okay, small, save it. That's better. Now I wanna add some spacing. We're gonna have a bottom, let's do the bottom border first. So we'll do border, bottom, one pixel, sol one pixel solid, and var, I have a custom one set up of shade 800. Okay, so there we go, I have my border at the bottom. Now let's add some padding inside of my, my box here and some margin to separate it from the bottom. So let's do padding. Let's do a variable of space large. And then, oops, this needs to be padding bottom. And let's do some margin on the bottom, margin bottom of var space is L. Okay, I like that. Now that's evenly kind of spaced out between those two elements. So that looks good to me. Now we need to, oh, I forgot. Let's add a class to my button. This, okay, so here, here's a question. Am I gonna use this button elsewhere on a different, maybe my YouTube custom post type from my archive? And I know I am. So I don't wanna give this like a blog back button, right? This is gonna be a button for, that I use anywhere. So I'm just gonna put in a um, back, let's do back button. Keep simple, back dot back slash BNT, okay? Here's my back button and we'll refresh. So I have it on my pages here. All right, okay, let's keep going. What else, let's we'll worry about that in a second. One thing I wanna do here is I want to eliminate some, some spacing. I know that if I add padding on my bottom, so this padding right here, I want it to match the margin on the bottom too. So that's what I've done. I've done variable space large. But here's the thing, I don't I don't wanna to have to change it twice. So if in the future I decide, oh, I want this to be medium and, I, and then I want this one to be medium as well, I have to change things twice. So let's make it easier for ourselves in the future. And we'll just say, um, I'm gonna create a variable with SAS. So in here, I'm gonna do a dollar sign and do content, we'll do a blog content gap. And we'll do a variable of space large. And so what I can do is I can just copy this and reference it here on both of these items. So now I'm changing it in just one spot. So if I say, oh, I want this to be um, extra small, don't know why, but see now, now it's referencing the same padding or the same spacing twice. So just making it easier for ourselves in the future. Always trying to think ahead of when am I gonna use this? How am I gonna use this? So, okay, let's do the button. Now, how am, where am I gonna style this button? This is a global button. And if you've watched my past videos, I put everything on global into their own partial sheets. So I have a buttons partial sheet and I have a mix in that I'm going to reference of some defaults for my button. So I'm gonna put in my global sheet, I'm gonna put back dash button and I'm going to reference my mix in. So right here, button defaults. We're gonna reference that real quick and let's see what it does. It adds some defaults, but I do not want that. I want to make it transparent. So if I look at my button, transparent in white text. So let's do, let's do background color of transparent, save it. Oop. Thought I messed something up. There we go. Okay. Did that transparent. We want um, border to be none. Border, no border. And we want our color to be white, which for me will be a variable of base. That's what I'm using for my white. Okay, there we go. That looks better. Now I need to remove the padding on the left-hand side. So we're going to do padding left of zero. It is taking in some padding from my button default, but I can override that just by putting it in there. There we go, much better. I love how that looks now. 
Okay. What now? What now? What now? We need to do my cards. So where am I going to put my cards? Now, here's the thing. This is a global card, so I'm going to create its own partial. I'm not going to put it in the blog archive partial sheet because it's not going to be just in the blog archive, just for my reference, right? I want this in its own partial sheet. So I'm going to create one and we're going to call this underscore cards, create this as a partial, click save, move this into my global. And we're going to reference this in my global sheet. So we're going to do at use cards. So now, now I can use my card sheet. Okay. So I'm going to put all my card information here. This is going to be dot post card and let's style the card first and then we'll keep going forward. My card is going to have a border radius and it's also going to have a border. That's pretty much the exact same as the one up here. So let's do that. Postcard, we're going to do border radius of um, variable radius M. And then I want a border one pixel solid of var shade 800. That's custom for me. Okay. All right. So I've added my border. I don't like the border radius. So let's do a border radius of large. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit more. Okay. Now let's flip this content. So what I can do here is instead of setting the, um, the order of these independently, I can just do a flex reverse. So we can do uh, display flex and I think it's flex order flex. Ah, flex, uh, reverse order on flex, flex direction, row reverse. There we go. See, sometimes we have to use Google to help us with this. So flex direction, column reverse, save. There we go. We've reversed it. Okay. That's what we wanted to do. Let's work on our image first and let's do our, this will be ampersand image wrapper. We want to do the wrapping first. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I just skipped something too. Yeah, if, if you can, you can barely see it, but if you look here, this does not have a border radius. That's because the image is going outside of my card. So I want to cut that off. And how I'm gonna do that is on my card itself, I'm gonna do overflow, hidden. There we go. Now it's hiding that image. Okay, now image wrapper. I wanna set this to a height of 20 rem. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I think it's because the image is going outside of my wrapper. So let's set overflow on my image wrapper to hidden. Oh, that was why it was just going overflowing. And we want, I want this to be a fit of the image itself to be covered because look what happens right now. It's not responsive. This, this does not flow all the way to the border. It doesn't change depending on the size of the card. So I wanted to set this to an object fit of cover. And the way we have to do that is inside my image wrapper, I have my dot postcard image. So we could do two ways. I, I did, I referenced it inside my wrapper, or we could just do at underscore image down here if we wanted to, which let's we'll just do that. Make it easy for everybody to see. So here's my image. I want this to be an object fit of cover. Now here's the problem. If I do that, nothing's going to happen. Let's refresh here. If I inspect here, nothing is going to happen to that card. See, it's not doing, it's not, it's not working here. So what we need to do is we need to set this, you know, let me actually inspect to this, not page source inspect. We'll do this so that I can just easily do that. There we go. Okay, let's leave it right there. We need to set the image itself to be a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So now when I save it, now it's working. There we go, perfect. Okay, and 
This needs to be a um, object position so we can change where it's at. I want it to be in this direct direct center. So 50-50 of the image. I want it to be 50-50. And so now this should all be working. There we go. Now it's fitting responsively. All right, what else do we need to do? Let's do our content down here. And uh, ampersand underscore content. We want to target maybe padding because it needs some padding around it. Variable space large. Oops. Probably too much. I feel like this too much. Let's do medium. That looks nicer. Okay, that looks good. And we want to do, it has a background color that's just slightly, you might not be able to see it, but it is slightly different than the background here. So I'm gonna add that background color, background color, var shade, custom shade for me of 950. And now that has, there we go, it separates itself from the background. We need to, we need to flip these. So let's do on my category. So let's do, and I want to say it was category, categories. Uh, make sure I'm right there. What did I give my categories here? Categories, double underscore categories. We want to do an order of negative one. That should push it to the top. So now it's above, but semant but um, in the HTML, my heading comes first before this, but it's just flipping it. So let's give that the very first order. Let's add a gap between these items. So on my content, let's do a gap of var space M. Let's do the same as the surrounding. Whoa, 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 way too much. Let's do extra small. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'm kind of referencing it here. I don't, it looks like it's too much. We're gonna do M's. I'm gonna do 0.4M. I mean, I like that better. It's a lot smoother. Okay. What else do we need to do here? We need, we need to fix this. We want this to be in a row here. So if I look at my Figma file, I want it to be in a row and I want to add a circle here that will automatically add depending on how many categories are in the list. So we are going to do, let's see here, categories. We're gonna put this into a flex row. So I need to, let's see what I need to do here. I'm gonna expand this here. I'm looking at content, content. Inside my content, there's my category. Let's target the UL inside of it and we'll set the UL. So inside my categories, let's target the UL. And my UL needs to be display flex and flex direction of row, okay? What happened here? Perfect, we're on a row. Let's add some gapping. We'll do a gap of 0.6M. Is that gonna be too much? No, that looks good. Okay, 0.6M. And now we need to add the before element. And how we're gonna do this is, I'm gonna say inside my UL, if an LI element has a, 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 a parent or a, um, a sibling, if it has another li element next to it, we're gonna add a before element to the second one. So let's say inside my UL, target an li that is next to another li. And on the before of that li, we want to do content of nothing we want to give it a height of, uh, let's do one M for now and we can change it. We want a width of one M, one M. We want a background color of red. And let's see what happened here. Oof, that's no, not it. Why, if an LI is next to an LI, give it the before I might need to put this before here. I might, might have messed that up. So let's remove this here. Oh, 
Was that why? Was it because I didn't add that there? Now it's not showing. You guys are gonna see me troubleshoot this right now. I'm gonna add it back to where it was. So we're gonna do ampersand before. We're gonna add all this in there. And it looks all wonky, that's okay. We're gonna fix it right now. We're gonna take this out. Okay, let's go back to where it was. It's not, where's my, okay, it's on the last one. That's what I want. But what's happening here? The display inline property prevents height from having effect. Try setting display to something other than inline. Okay, so on my LI, let's set this to display of flex. Now it's showing, but it's showing above. So we need to do flex direction of row. What in the world? I, oh, because I'm doing it on the before. I don't want that. I need to do, on my LI itself as well, we need to do a display of flex and give this a flex direction of row. There we go. Okay, and then we need to center it because it's like sitting above. So we're going to do align items, center. I always get these mixed up. Yep, okay, now we're centered. Let's give it some border radius on the before element, border radius of 100 V max. And that's going to um, add as much, it's going to add as much curve as possible. Always, it's always gonna add as much as possible. So it's gonna give me a perfect circle. That's what we want, it's a bit too big. So let's change it to like 0.4 M, 0.4 M better and we need to add the color so let's find out what color i need to do the background color needs to change to what is this var action 300 let's copy that and let's do the background color of var action 300 there we go that's better and then on my li i need to add some gap here so we're going to do some gap of zero i want to keep it the same as above so right here on my ul I'm separating the two LIs by 0.6M, so I wanna do the same gapping here. We're gonna save, and now they're equally gapped. And let's check here, let's duplicate one of my LIs and see what happens. So let's check that out. It's adding the circles to every single item, but it is not wrapping. So I wonder if I did, on my UL, let's do flex wrap of wrap and now it's adding below, which is perfectly fine. I'm never gonna have that many um, categories, but just in case we wanna fix that. So, okay, we're looking good there. And, what? oh, let's see here. I can, I have this same gaps here and they always have to be the same to keep things consistent. So I'm gonna use another variable. I'm gonna do category gap. I'm gonna create a variable with a dollar sign and this is gonna be 06M. And then I'm gonna reference this category, or this uh, this variable here. So now I'm changing it in one spot and it's staying the same. So I could say I want this to be 1.6M and now they're both gonna reference and stay even. There we go, okay. I, I apologize if this is a lot, if it's hard to keep up with, but I uh, hope you guys are learning something. So we're gonna refresh here and our cards are different sizes. I don't like that. So we're going to do stretch. I'm gonna add a class of stretch to my card grid. So let's do stretch. Let's save it and let's check it out here. Uh, nothing happened. Did I not put it? I did stretch on this grid. They should be stretching. Let's say what happened. Let's see what happened here. The card itself is set to display a flex. Do I need to do flex grow of one? No. Do I need to do justify inline items stretch? No, there's no there. What happened here? 
Like it's working here, but on this, oh, did I add a wrong class? Stre stretch. I have no clue what happened. Did I add it to the card on accident? What in the world? Now it's working, okay. All right, it's working now. But we have this weird issue here where this is the, it's sitting all the way at the bottom and this, uh, this image, uh, all right, let's figure this out. Why, why are we having this problem here? I want to, I have an idea, okay. Let's set my card is set to display a flex. I want my image wrapper, instead of a height, we, we want this to fit. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna change this height to do a, a flex. And this is a shorthand for like flex grow, flex shrink. So on my content and my image wrapper, we're gonna do, I don't want my image to grow. So I want it to stay the same size. I don't want it to shrink, but I want it to stay at 20 rem, okay? I don't think anything's gonna change, it's not. However, I want this to grow to take up as much space as possible as there is, but my image to stay the same size. So on my content wrapper, I'm gonna do flex. I want it to grow. I don't want it to shrink. And I don't wanna give it a base size. So it just kinda of takes up as much space. There we go. Now it's taking up as much space as possible. But I want this, cause it kinda looks weird cause there's space here and this is at the bottom. Let's, let's put this all the way to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is in my card, we have, I think it was the date and we're gonna set this to be margin top of auto. And what that should do, there we go. What that should do is say, hey, push yourself all the way to the bottom. As far as you can, push yourself all the way to the bottom. And so those will always sit at the bottom of the card. Now we're in a good spot. I'm liking how this is turning out. This looks good. I think, I think we did it all, right? I think we have. Now let's see, we have, we probably need to check accessibility. So if I'm tabbing in here, okay, got my, that was what I wanted. I wanted it to be this first. That's why we put it as the very first item in our card, so that if it's tab indexed, it's going to go to the title first. And then it goes to the category. That's fine. Now here's, here's where we have to kind of decide, does, do I care that a user will have to tab into my categories? I don't because I, I, I want those to be usable. So I'm gonna leave it. I don't really care that it's gonna do that. Now I do want my whole card clickable. I don't want it to have just this. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use an automatic CSS thing here. On my title, I'm gonna go clickable parent. And what this is gonna do is this is going to set the clickable area to the closest relative element and we're going to set the card itself to a position of relative so that it expands to the card. So now the whole card is clickable. That's what we want, okay? So I go there, let's check. Uh, I apologize, I'm gonna put on voice. Accessibility over. shortcut checked. Why? Voice over off. Why are you not working? Accessibility shortcut check. Voice over on universal scary. access control. Great. MW Bricks uh, visited. Link. Visited. Link. Read more about the mistakes I've made as an agency owner. List four items. List four items. Visited. Link. Business. List categories one item level two. That's you are currently awesome. on a visited. Two. Link. Read more about how to make money in a crowded industry. Li visited. Okay. Link. Business. Visited. Good. Link. Link. Read more about like voice over off. It. Okay. Now, let's see here. We could. Just to go one step further, I don't really like that the, that it's putting this, what do you call it? It's putting this, uh, this focus color, or, or like when I focus it, it's going to the actual item itself. I kind of want it to focus on the whole card. So what I'm gonna do here, a little bit more advanced here. I, I don't really have to do this. I'm just kind of doing this for the sake of doing it and showing you guys this, this idea. I'm gonna go to my A, and I'm gonna to go to the focus state. I wanna find out what my focus looks like. So all of the CSS right here. I want 
this CSS. So I'm gonna copy it. My outline, what is it gonna do, okay? And I want, when my card, let's put this right below it, when it has a focus within, I want to set the, I want to set the outline to be the same as my whole card, okay? So when it has an item that is focused inside of it, give it the outline. So look at that. Now I'm focusing on the card itself. So look at it, but I, I wanna remove that, that inside. I want it to just be on the outside of the card. So again, when the card has an item inside of it that's focused, give it this style, which it has, it's done that. But now when it has something in focus, I want to remove it from the dot post card title. I want to set the outline style to, I think it's none. If I do none, is that going to work? No. Outline style. Let's see here. Outline none. So not just outline style, we'll do outline none. Do I need to refresh? Did I do something wrong here? Up, oh, boop. But not quite it. Postcard A. A dot post tight. Oh, did I spell this wrong? Title. Grr, why is that doing? Let's do an A of a link with that. It's still not doing it. Why? Okay, let's figure this out. Ah, that's why. I'm trying to target an A with that and not the postcard title and then the A inside of it. So I have to look at my DOM, that's why. Let's target the postcard title and then the the um, the link inside of it. So let's change this to postcard title, the A inside. There we go, okay. So now we're focusing on the title, but it's looking like it's the whole card. And then we're doing the inside category, okay? The whole card, oh, I can even refresh because it looks all weird. Okay, the whole card, the category inside, categories inside, I like that. Okay, that's really cool. Now, can I click on these categories? I can't. So I think I can do, on my category, I want these to kind of sit above so that I can actually click them as a user. Right now I can't because it's being overtaken by this link. It's taking up the whole card. So I'm gonna go to my categories. If I do position relative, it should pull it up. It does. Okay, so now, now we're good there. Let's check our accessibility. Accessibility shortcut checked. Voice break. And W Bricks Blueprint. Wow. Entering and W Bricks Blueprints blog. Business web content. Visit it. Link. Read more about the mistakes I've made as an agency owner. List four items. Visit it. Link. Business. List categories one item level two. Visit it. Link. Read more about how to make money in a crowded industry. Visit it. Link. Business. List cat. Okay. Visit it. Link. We're... Tutorials. You are voiceover yeah, off. We're, we're rolling here. Okay, we're good. I think this is all I needed to do to style it. Let's check. Uh, let's check the responsiveness here. Make sure everything's responsive. Everything's working good. That's what I wanted. Look at that. So I hope you guys learned something there with the with the focus within. Again, just saying, if an item inside of it's focused, give it a focusable area and then turning off that focusable area for whatever item I'm choosing. So it just, it makes everything just look nicer if someone's tabbing through, it just looks clean. Nicholas from the future here, I noticed one more thing we need to adjust. When I click on a link inside my card, we'll see my focus ring appears. I don't want that, not for people that click, I only want it to show for people that are using my keyboard. So I had to do a bit of digging, but um, I wanna show you guys now. We need to change this focus within to has focus visible. So if, if an element inside my postcard has focus visible, so somebody is using a keyboard to tab into a child element of my postcard, it will give an outline to my card. So I'm going to check this now. Did I save it? I'll save it. And it's now working correctly. 
And if I click on this, there's no tab color anymore. So that is the one small change. The The problem with this is that it, it does not support Firefox. The has functionality in CSS, Firefox doesn't support it. So when somebody is on Firefox and I'll go to my address, let's go this, Oops, let's go wrong one. I'm editing my video right now as we speak. Let's go to Firefox. Let's enter this in. All right, if a user tabs in here, we're gonna see they just tab to the title first. I don't really care about that. That's totally fine by me for Firefox users. So I'm not even gonna bother with it. I'm just gonna stick with has and if focus visible. If it has focus visible, give the card an outline. So there we go. Just made that one small change and we're back up and running. If you are still watching this tutorial, I'm very surprised. I'm glad you stuck around to the end. I I wanted to keep everything in the video uh, as far as the styling, the CSS. I know it took a very long time to do the styling, but I wanted to show you all of my thinking, my process to delivering a result and not cut down the video. I wanted, I wanted you to see everything. So leave a comment down below of what you guys thought about me doing everything in SAS. If you want me to do styling within Bricks, I can definitely change it up. So just let me know. And thank you for watching this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next one.